We've covered two types of rotations so far, Euler rotations and matrix rotations. And the problem is that neither one of these does slurping very well. Slurp. Slurp stands for spherical linear interpolation. I have no idea why it can be spherical and linear at the same time. But if you think of it as two points on the surface of a sphere, here and here, we want to get from one to the other in a direct line. The problem is that with Euler angles, when you try and interpolate, you it happens like this. It's not a direct line. It happens kind of in a curved path. And with matrix rotation representations, you, you can't do any interpolation at all. Uh, it just doesn't work. And so we're going to develop uh, a new method of representing rotations that can be interpolated. So it's called axis angle and you can represent it as a theta, that's the number of degrees that you rotate, and an axis of rotation and we'll call that N. So N, you can think of it as like the axle on a wheel or uh, of like a car or a bicycle the wheel spins around that axle in the same way that your vector or your object will spin around this end and it will spin around by exactly theta degrees so I'm gonna try and draw a picture of what's going on here so that we can get a good uh, representation this will be our n hat okay and it's the axis of rotation mind you it's a unit length vector so it might it's probably gonna be very small but it doesn't matter how long it is so here we have the vector v that we want to rotate, okay? And we're going to be we're going to be rotating it like this around in a circle. So we're going to be rotating it around the circle like this to this point. If this is this is the uh, center of rotation right here, then we're going to be rotating it to here. So this will be theta degrees. This is actually, you can see this clockwise rotation. Usually in mathematics we rotate counterclockwise, but the numbers all come out the same. So for visual clarity, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate clockwise in this case. So the first step is to get the orthogonal projection of V onto N. And we'll get this vector here. And that'll do for you in orange. Okay, and I'll call it P. And the second step is we're going to get the error vector. I just learned today it's also called the rejection vector. That's perpendicular. Okay, I'm going to call it E. And we're going to rotate E around in this circle until we get to E prime. E prime is the rotated one. So what we're looking for is V prime, the rotated vector that points at this point right here. This is the rotated vector. V prime. And you can see that that's P plus E prime. Okay? So let's see here. V prime equals P plus E prime. That's pretty simple. Let's figure out how we can get P and E prime in terms of V and N, which were, and theta, which were our original um, values. So P, as you can see, is just the, it's the projection of V onto N. We know how to do projections. That is V dot N times N. That's P. That's P right there. Now E, we have to rotate it theta degrees around N. And so it gets a little bit tricky. We need not only E, but we need a vector that's perpendicular to E and this n-axis. Okay, I'm going to show that here. I'm going to show that here as F. F. And these two are perpendicular. Uh, and then from there it works just like the same way if you remember when we were doing Euler angles and uh, one of the matrix videos, I don't remember. We rotated um, we rotated vectors around the Cartesian plane, and we're going to do the same thing, okay? 
This will be E, you get a different color here, E times cosine theta plus F times uh, sine theta. This should look familiar to you by now, cosine theta and sine theta giving us a rotation of a vector. Yoink. So, um, and we know what E and F are. We can calculate E and F pretty easily. E was the error vector. And the formula for that is, let me copy this down, V dot N, N. E is the rejection vector, so that's V minus the projection dot N times n. And that entire thing gets multiplied by cosine theta. So this e right here becomes all of that. And then f is a vector that's perpendicular to n and v. And we know how to get perpendicular vectors. That is n cross v. n cross v sine theta. So simplifying this, I'm going to go ahead and skip a step here, just in the interest of time. It's a very simple process to simplify it. We get this right here, v dot n times n times 1 minus cosine theta. It just involves doing a little bit of factoring, it's not hard. Cross v sine theta. And there it is, an equation that will allow us to rotate a vector around the n-axis, theta degrees. So let's go implement this axis angle. I never wrote that down. This is axis angle rotation. And uh, let's go implement it in the code. So I've made this function that rotates a vector around an axis angle. n will be our axis of rotation. A will be our theta because I can't type theta on this keyboard. And V is the vector we want to rotate. I'm putting our formula right up on the screen here, so let's do it. Now you may find it interesting, I sure do, that this this uh, formula was originally written by a guy named Rodriguez. Uh, well, he spells his name with a with an S, I spell my name with a Z, um, but I think that's because he's French, but we'll give him a pass on that because he was such a cool mathematician and he developed this formula for us. Pretty nice formula and pretty easy to implement. There it is. Uh, I think, oh wait, this should be a V. There we go. Uh, now I'm not going to get into a demonstration of this because I, I want to get into the next video. There are plenty of applications of this. I've seen it in particle systems, uh, spread distribution of, of bullets, you name it. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with this guy. Next video we're going to do quaternions. Uh, they're very related to axis angle. We're going to get into what they are. They also represent rotations and they're really neat. So I'll see you next video.